Hi and welcome to Learning AutoCAD 2013 tutorial number 14. Today we'll see how to create your own text, dimension, and multi-leader styles manually. In our last tutorial, we cover annotations and explain that these are controlled by means of styles. Our challenge today is how to make those annotations display correctly when our plans are ready for printing in paper. This tutorial has been created by EasyCAD for you, and we want to encourage you to rate the video and share it if you enjoy. As we all should know, we draw in model space where objects are typically drawn at actual scale. But then we have to print or plot those drawings, and either we reduce or increase the size to fit the paper in which are presented for production or construction purposes. The main issue is that although we have to scale our drawing, the annotations on it like text and dimensions should be kept at a fixed size on the paper space or on the paper for consistency. A general standard accepted is that regular text should be one eighth of an inch or three millimeters high and for text and titles, headings, etc., a quarter of an inch or six millimeters high. Additionally, most construction or production documents present different parts of the drawing or different sections at different scales. The challenge is how we make annotations appear the same size evenly when our objects are presented at different scales. There are two main ways to enter and adjust our annotations in CAD. Number one is manually, and second, annotative. We will cover annotative in the next video, and now we'll focus on creating them manually. The first step should be determining the scale factor. And you might say, what is that? A drawing scale factor is basically a ratio between the size of the objects in model space, which should be at full scale, and the size at which it will be printed in paper space. Let's say, for example, we might use uh, a scale of half of an inch equal one foot or one inch equal 60 feet. Scale factors are calculated by dividing the scale in model space, which should be, remember, full scale, by the paper space scale. So, for example, if you will print your drawing at a quarter of an inch equals one foot, in this case, one foot or 12 inches is your model scale and a quarter of an inch or 0 0.25 inches is the scale for the paper then we divide 12 by 0 0.25 and we got the number 48 this is the scale factor you will use it for this particular case because everything drawn at full scale in model space could be shrink 48 times to be displayed in paper space at the scale of a quarter of an inch equal one foot. So in other words, this means our model space is 48 times bigger than our paper space objects when at this specific scale. Our challenge now is to create a dimension and text style that is easily seen when we're working in model space and then will plot at a standard height of three millimeters or one eighth of an inch. Now let's jump to create our own text style. Move to annotate tab in the ribbon. The first panel is text. And now please click on the diagonal arrow here. When you click on it, the text style dialog box or manager will pop. On the left, you will see the available styles. All drawings should have by default annotative and standard styles. But we can also create user defined styles like this two that I have here, dim and label 48. Once we create ours, it will also display here. Now on the right, click on the button new so we start creating our own style. Once clicked, the new name by default is going to be style1. My suggestion is use a descriptive name to indicate what it is for. 
For example, I'll use here the name title 48 to indicate that it has a factor of 48 and title because it is what it's going to be used for. When you hit OK, it will appear automatically on the styles area. The most important part now is the height. With the formula I already gave, we found the drawing scale factor to be 48, right? Now, if we multiply this number or ratio times the height of our intended text in paper space, in our case, we want it to be a quarter of an inch, which is also 0 0.25 inches high, right? That equals 12 or 12 inches for the height we have to specify in model space, which is this place here. So to wrap up this concept, you determine scale factors by dividing model by paper scales and then multiplying the result for the height of the annotations you want in paper space. To arrive to the right height, you need to specify here. Now let's visit some other features. As you see in the font area, using the drop down menu, you can select the font you prefer. In my case, I'll use Times New Roman. As you see down here, we have a preview of the style, so use it to see if you like it or not. Now, to the right, we have the font style. Pull the menu to see that this refers to bold, italic, etc. And try it to see the results on the preview. As you notice here, this checkbox also indicates that we can make our style annotative, and for now, we won't use it. Under effects, you can see how it might look if upside down is checked or backwards. The width option gives you the chance to widen it as you please and the oblique allows you to push the text at a specific angles, like here, let's say 33 degrees. After we're done modifying our style, all we have to do is click in apply and close it. And immediately our style becomes the current style in the drawing and you can see it up here in the ribbon if you want to switch to a different one just pull the menu and select the one you prefer or need let's go back to the text style dialog box to create a second style for the general annotations to display at one eighth of an inch high so click new again and let's name it text 48 we already know the scale factor is 48, so multiply 48 times 0 0.125, which is 1 eighth of an inch high, and we get the number 6 for our general text when using a scale of a quarter of an inch equal 1 foot. And now practice by selecting the characteristics you want. In the meantime, I just want to remind you guys to rate the video if you like it and share. Also. If you happen to have further questions, please feel free to post. And finally, let's use our new styles by calling the title 48 style. Now use the multi-text command and let's write floor plan and center below our plan as a title for our floor plan. Now let's do the same but with the dimension styles. Click the diagonal arrow and the dimensions panel or manager will come up. Like with the text styles on the left, we'll have the available styles. Also, the annotative and standards are the default and the rest are user defined, which means I created them. On the right, we have some options like compare some of them or modify an existing one. In our case, we'll click new to start a new style. We have three options from the bottom up with the option use for, we can select what we want it for. Normally, we will use it for all dimensions, although you can use it for specific, like uh, angular dimensions or something else. But let's leave it as all dimensions. For now, we won't touch annotations, so we leave uncheck this option. The next one is start with, which indicates to cat on what existing style your new one will be based. Although CAD automatically select the last one you were using, you can select from the menu a different one. And finally, 
we can select a distinctive name for our new style. In my case, I'll use Arch 48. Now to start creating the style, we click continue and this is what we got, a dial box with plenty of options to specify even the most insignificant details. So let's visit the most used ones. On the tab lines, we can specify color, line type, line weight, distance from origin, and a bunch of other details. You can treat them separately, uh, which means that the extension lines can be independent from the dimension line. While we're changing those, you can assign their different colors. You can have a preview of all the modifications on the right upper corner. On the following tab, symbols and arrows, we can specify what type of arrowhead you want. You might select from the menu, as in my case, the architectural tick for both sides of the dimension line. Now we can specify the size of the arrowheads or the ticks. In the following tab, we have first the text appearance option. We can specify here the text style, color, height, etc. Any changes you add or remove to the dimension style will be visible on the preview immediately like now when we check the draw frame around text option an interesting you can see it here an interesting feature is that we can open the text style editor from within the dimension style by clicking this button and modify an existing one or create a new one from scratch now, closer than back in the dimension style editor. Normally, you would select from your existing text styles one because you want the height to be the same for both your text and dimensions. And notice that when you select one, the height gets grayed out because the height was already predefined when you created the text style. On the fit tab, we have plenty of options to select if there is no enough room to place the text for the dimensions properly. Normally, you would let CAD to decide for you. So, first option is the recommended one. On the text placement, it's completely up to you. Moving on to the primary units tab, we have here the option to select the main units. You have plenty of formats to select from, starting with scientific, decimal, etc. You can also specify the precision of the measurements what type of fraction format you want, and up to where you will round it up. Additionally, you can select how you want the angular values expressed. Normally, we'll leave it at a decimal degree. On the following tab, we normally don't use it, but you can have also values expressed with additional units of measurement. Like for example, in both engineering and architectural, or in both inches and millimeters. Again, this is not common, as well as the tolerances in, in the last tab, which will depend on the specific discipline you are drawing for. Here, you can select the method you prefer, uh, etc. While visiting all of these tabs, you will notice that some options are not available. But once you're satisfied with your style, you can click OK, and it will be the current style in the annotation tab of the ribbon. The same is true of leader styles. Let's move to the tab and click on the style manager arrow. A similar dial box will appear and similarly, you can modify an existing style or create a new one. When clicking new, again, it will give you the options to start like the ones before. Just click on continue and we'll, on, and we'll end up in the dial box to create or modify the style. It will only have three tabs. The leader format tab basically will give you the ability to define your leader in terms of color, line type, line weight, size, type of arrowhead or tip, etc. In the second structure, you can give specifications for the scale, the constraints, and the landing settings for the leader. And in the content tab is where you'll find more options. These are related to the appearance of the leader in terms of the style, the color, angle, height, and or justification for the text to be used itself. There is nothing to lose by trying some of these options on your own. 
since the process is very, very similar to the ones we just saw with text and dimensions. After that, all we do is click OK to close the editor. And again, this leader style will become current in the drawing. Now we're done with what we're talking about. For the next video, we will cover the second method, which is annotative dimensions, which simplifies the entire math in the process. Well, friends, this is it for today. I hope you like what you learned. Remember, don't forget to rate the video. Again, thanks for watching and see you next time.